Another thing I wanted to go over today is permissions in AWS. So, okay, I want to preface this as to why a hacker would care about this. And it's because like we constantly see these uh, like data breaches or all this juicy data or customer information that gets accidentally leaked. And sometimes it's like, oh, a threat actor, you know, like expose this information. But most of the time it's like somebody at that company created a policy or like didn't quite understand the implications of what they were doing when setting up a new service and ended up like doing like something that's like risky, like leaving it open for anybody to access once they know what API to call. So um, that's like the number one source of data breaches that I see nowadays, honestly. And I wanted to go through a little bit about what it means, uh, like some of the terminology and why there's a whole specialized like field of people that work in AWS stuff and how it's different from like um, Azure and like some of the other services that you might have heard of. So, all right, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share my actual Amazon uh, account here. And this is the identity and access management panel. So when people make mistakes uh, that hackers are interested in, in, it is generally in relation to the policies created in the identity and access management. Yeah, so like this is what the core kind of thing that we're gonna talk about a little bit looks like in, in actual fact. It is a uh, policy that allows or disallows something explicitly um, uh, in relation to a specific like entity, like an like a AWS account an S3 bucket or like some other Amazon nonsense term that just refers to like a database or like a, a running virtual machine that might need to access it. It's kind of when you're first getting into hacking, like you'll hear about these big, big breaches and you will start to understand that, okay, like there's a lot of mistakes being made out there and a lot of like hackers that are, you know, getting great bug bounties and like making like really like earth shattering uh, news when they find these breaches. Um, are doing it because they're just able to pick up on where people have made mistakes in setting up these policies. So like these policies like are pretty straightforward, like JSON, like they they are relatively easy to read, um, which is why I like the the way that they're laid out. But they can be applied to either individual users or groups of users or roles, which are kind of like in between. It's like a something that, uh, for example, a virtual machine could like assume a role, perform an action uh, with a certain policy, and then go back to doing whatever it's doing and give up that role and not have to have those perhaps elevated or dangerous permissions when it's not actively doing something it's supposed to do. So there are some blogs that have been put out by Amazon that are notably better uh, in a one-to-one -one comparison uh, for like visual aids and examples. So I have to shout out some of these blogs. If you're interested in, in digging into this stuff, there's a lot of great explanations that um, are on Amazon's blogs, perhaps not in their direct documentation, which unfortunately come up first when you start looking up these problems. So as I said, we have users. Those are like obviously like either human users or maybe uh, like, a, like a piece of code that's operating as a user. Um, and then there's roles. Um, so that's an identity that is temporary um, but it can be taken on by uh, not necessarily a single person. It can be anybody who needs it. And then we have groups and groups are like groups of users. Um, and the reason for groups is generally like, I guess in AWS, you used to have to write these like ridiculous like permissions statements for like every individual user and you couldn't really reuse them. And um, it was just like a, a very complicated and uh, annoying process to do. So by having groups and in my, uh, dashboard, you can see I have user groups, computer abusers, and computer users. Um, then I can make it so that I can set policies for these groups, and I can basically reuse those policies and make them like very simple and very explicit, um, and generally kind of sort different groups uh, as I need to. So that's kind of key to the reusability of this concept. Um, oops, not that one. Um, and uh, policies are the are where people then make mistakes. I mean, in, in other areas, maybe they're like adding unnecessary users to something or they're adding external uh, like users to a group, but policies are kind of where uh, things can go wrong based on what you say uh, is going to happen here. So one thing to note that I think is useful is that uh, AWS by default denies stuff. So um, like our IAM policies uh, d like explicitly deny things if there isn't permission given. So if you don't you know, give someone permission to access something um, or perform an action on that object, then uh, they can't do anything. And that's great because by default, it's just going to deny it. 
Um, and it also means that deny, deny will always trump and allow. So if you write a policy that has like, you know, allow this like S3 bucket um, to be accessed by this user, um, then you can also say, you know, write a policy that says to deny access to that user as well. And even though the, both of those policies are listed, the deny policy will always come out on top. So that makes it so you can be pretty granular about, you know, maybe writing like a big policy that says you can do all this stuff except this one user or something like that. And then the deny uh, is the one that is counted most strongly, I guess, or like overrides and allow. So those are some things that like people think about when they're creating these policies. And this is what an actual policy looks like. Um, you have the action, um, which is the uh, get object action. Um, this is the SSID uh, or SID, I, no, sorry, I, I don't know what this is, but it's the allow get object. I'm guessing this is the tag for the, uh, for the action name. Uh, effect is allow, and this could also be deny. And then uh, it links to a specific resource and the asterisk implies basically everything in here. So if you were to just put an asterisk and that's all, it would just be like everything, which is what you don't want. And this is where, like, if you were looking for a risky policy, these stray asterisks or like giving too much permission is exactly where that automatic like uh, misconfiguration. I wanna actually show how this works. So this is, if you create an AWS account, then this is the identity and access management panel. And it'll give you information about what you got going on. And for me anyway, it's gonna warn me that um, I need multi-factor authentication for my root user, um, which I thought I already set up, but I guess I didn't. So um, it'll give you security alerts, obviously and give you kind of like a general rundown of how things are being accessed. That's good. Like it, it lets you see if you've misconfigured something, which I clearly have with this giant glowing one. But anyway, so we have a breakdown of all the IAM resources. So that's gonna be user groups, users, roles, policies, and identity um, providers. That's gonna be like more external stuff. Like if I wanted to connect like Google Drive or something uh, and have it be able to write to an, or access an AWS bucket or an S3 bucket, then it could do that. So um, let me show off kind of how this can be divided. So we have individual users. And in this case, I have uh, Buck, Carl, and Ramsey. And each one of them has been assigned a group. But I guess in the olden days of AWS, they went through and they would give like, each employee or whatever, or each you know like program or running virtual machine its own individual policy, which sucks. So like we don't want to do that. Um, and, and instead, we have... Um, policies that we can apply to them via the groups that they're in. So, um, all right, so I have my individual users. I haven't gone through and applied individual policies to them or put them in groups. Um, but, you know, now you can see that I, I actually have at some point. Um, but when they were created, they were just here kind of floating, waiting to be assigned to a group. So then I assigned groups. So I have, in this case, computer abusers and computer users. And I have two users in the users. And then I also have one abuser. So I can see which users are here. I can assign then policies specifically to these users, knowing that um, you know they should be allowed to do stuff. And I can um, also add additional users if I wanted to do that here. So I can see permissions. Um, they've been given CloudWatch logs functionality, so they're able to see. Uh, oh, it spells it out. So this is one of the like manage policies that AWS supplies or Amazon like supplies. Uh, and it's basically like a boilerplate policy and you can see the JSON here, like for what it's actually saying. And it's um, saying that it's allowing um, full access to CloudWatch logs. Um, and then the resource is that asterisk that we were talking about. So this, this basically means these users have like a large amount of permissions and being able to like look at these raw policies or write them, I guess is like what Amazon security people do all day. Um, it is apparently something that is a great source of problems and granularity. And once you learn how to write them, then like you're, you know, you're excellent. But until that point, uh, it can be a problem figuring out why something does or doesn't have permission when it should or shouldn't. Uh, and this is where it all comes down to that with a, um, AWS resources. So there's a lot of different things that can be affected by this. It could be um, what virtual machine can access what uh, information on a virtual drive. Uh, it can be connecting a third-party service or a user to information stored in logs or on a drive. Uh, but this is kind of the beating heart of Amazon's authentication and where all of the really interesting misconfigurations that expose lots of log files uh, or other uh, sorts of diagnostic information can be made. 
So hackers would discover this in a number of ways. Like if, for example, you had a role that was way too open, like a public role where people could like list files or maybe write to something that they weren't supposed to, then hackers would basically go through and try all the different actions in the API and see if they could match any of these to weak permissions. And if they were able to, for example, find something really juicy that they wanted to um, like scrape out of a particular database, then uh, some of the permissions in this might allow them to have everything they need to access that resource and be able to scrape everything and, and download the entire thing. So uh, yeah, that's just my little introduction to like permissions.